In this video, we're going to be doing an overview of transcription. However, before we do this, let's revisit the idea of the central dogma of molecular biology. The central dogma of biology essentially follows the flow of information from DNA to RNA in transcription and from RNA to protein in translation. Now let's start by looking at DNA. Remember that DNA can replicate. We've looked at that in previous videos. But when we're trying to get information from DNA to RNA, we transcribe it. And thus, we're not changing from nucleic acid to a different language. We're keeping nucleic acid language. We're just changing from DNA to RNA. Imagine you're listening to what I'm saying in this video and you're writing down notes. You'd be transcribing what I'm saying. It still is in English, but you're transcribing it down from one source to another. So that's transcription. And then next is translation. In translation, we're translating the information stored in RNA, in nucleic acid language, into protein language. And this protein can go and do an effect in the cell. However, even the central dogma is not perfect in describing the flow of information. Certain viruses, such as human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, contain an enzyme called reverse transcriptase, which can turn RNA into DNA. HIV uses reverse transcriptase to take its RNA genome and insert it into its host DNA genome. RNA replication can also occur. If we look at the coronavirus, it uses an enzyme called RNA-dependent RNA polymerase to replicate its RNA. Nonetheless, in your course and in these next few videos, we're going to be following the central dogma, both in transcription, the processing of mRNA, and in the translation of mRNA into a protein. When we look at transcription, we like to simplify it down to a basic fundamental unit called the transcription unit. When referencing points in the transcription unit, we compare them by whether they are downstream or upstream from each other. For example, this section here is called the promoter. This section is called the RNA coding region. And this region is called the terminator. This specific sequence right here is called the start sequence. And this specific sequence right here is called the termination site. Let's try talking about points in the transcription unit in reference to each other. For example, the RNA coding region is downstream to the promoter. However, the promoter is upstream to the termination site. Likewise, the terminator is downstream to the RNA coding sequence. However, the RNA coding sequence is upstream to the transcription start site. There's also specificity in the direction of the strands. As we've said before, transcription will always happen in the 5' prime to the 3' prime direction. And thus, the template strand will be the strand that runs from the promoter to the terminator in the 3' prime to 5' prime direction, thus allowing us to create an RNA in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The template strand is complementary to the non-template strand but the template strand is also complementary to the transcribed RNA. Thus, we can conclude that with the exceptions of T's replaced with U's, the non-template strand is the same sequence as the RNA. And thus, the non-template strand is often called the coding strand. We can also call the template strand the non-coding strand. Essentially, this can be condensed to template is equal to non-coding and non-template is equal to coding, which, again, when we reference the position of the promoter, the template goes in the 3' prime to 5' prime direction. And likewise, the non-template goes in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Now let's practice with this. Let's imagine that we have a transcriptional unit that's fairly short with a template strand, the sequence, a, T, G, A, C, T, G. Now, we want to try to find the mRNA molecule synthesized by this. But where do we even start? How do we know the directionality of this? Well, let's first remember that the left side will always be the 5 prime end. And the right side will always be the 3 prime end, unless otherwise stated. Now that we've determined the directionality of this, let's replace the nucleotides from the DNA which we'll write a D next to with RNA on the bottom. Now let's remember that our RNA, because it's complementary, is also anti-parallel. And so on the left side, we have three prime, and on the right side, we have five prime. So let's look at this. What base pairs to an A in RNA? It's going to be a uracil. What base pairs to a T? An adenine. G, cytosine, A, uracil, C, guanine, T, adenine, and G, cytosine. 
So now we have our RNA template, but it's written in the three prime to five prime direction. Oftentimes on an exam, you may see this as an answer choice to the question. However, generally your professor is going to want you to have it written in the five prime to three prime direction. So let's practice this by turning this sequence around. We're going to write it from five prime to three prime, and there we have it. This is our RNA sequence. But something else that your professor could ask you to do from this is to determine the coding sequence. So remember from over here, our coding sequence is the same as our non-template. But our coding sequence is also the same as our RNA molecule. So this is actually a pretty easy task. All we have to do is take this RNA code and convert it back to DNA code. C's stay the same, A's stay the same, G's stay the same, but we have to turn uracil into thymine. So there we have it. We have our non-coding sequence, we have our coding sequence, and we have our RNA transcript. Now, if we wanted to verify this, we can go back and we could write this section of DNA out complementary to this original section of template DNA. If you look at that, it matches up, so we know that we did this correctly. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are currently enrolled as a Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need to know about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu. tutoring You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online through Navigate, or just drop in during our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.